Hi, my name is Sam Durkin, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, paint a field of buttercups. As you see, I've already uh, put uh, the base layer on the canvas. This is an important step uh, for your painting, is essentially to get the basic lights and darks and shades onto the canvas in a very, very general, general way. Um, the next stage um, we're going to go to is uh, to put the dark areas in, and uh, I'll come back sort of halfway through that and show you where, where it goes and how that's going to be. That's going to be set out, but essentially, um, stems of the uh, of the buttercups are going to be here, and we're going to move across and possibly have uh, the sunlight coming out there uh, towards the end of the painting. Right, let's crack on. We've covered the canvas now in in a, in a second layer. Uh, that just gets more definition into the into the painting. Now, currently we've just got dark areas and a few lighter areas, but generally we've been working to build up the darker areas onto the canvas. Okay, because we're going to come out of these into lighter areas and more detail later on. Uh, I put the sun in because that's essentially that's probably not going to change a great deal. Might do a little extra on that later towards the end, but essentially that's. That's where the light is coming across this field. Um, we see it sort of obliterating many of the many of the flowers here that we can barely see. I'm just going to uh, tidy this bit up here because uh, the paint's a little too thick. Okay. But essentially, this stage we're just getting as much paint on the canvas as we can, and in the general areas where the picture is going to be. We can already sort of see that we're probably going to put some, f some flowers in here. We've marked them out. They don't have to be very accurate at this stage because we can change as we go, but that feels natural. That feels, that feels right. We feel like we've got some depth here for the stems here at the front, and there's a sort of layer here of some buttercups here, here, which obviously going to get more yellow as we go, but we put the darker areas in first so we can work up from, from the darkest areas. And we put some dark areas behind. I'm probably going to darken this bit even further, get it, get it almost, to, almost to black. Um, you'll see from my colour demonstration uh, video uh, how we mix black. We don't use uh, an, a pure black because uh, that's, that's not a good thing. We, we mix all the colors together. But essentially that's what we're doing here. We've got, we've got a very green, dark, dark green here, which we've, which we've made mixing um, cyan and yellow and a touch of magenta into that. So the magenta has darkened the, the green. So we start off with a sort of a natural pure green, which is uh, cyan and, and yellow to mix together. Then we've added some of the magenta in, and the magenta has darkened it. If we added enough magenta in, it would go black. Um, although the, the chances of you mixing a perfect black are unlikely, which is a good thing because we don't want to get black onto the, onto the canvas if we can avoid it. Okay, right. As you see, we've we've darkened some more areas. We've really brought in some darkness here. I think what we're looking at here is, is maybe there's a, a dark forest or something behind here, um, and we've got all the undergrowth here uh, underneath the, uh, the buttercups and we can already see that we're starting to build some some lines into this that will be the stems of the plants but we're going to work on that more later um, essentially I've just left some little gaps here in the darkness to give me some ideas of where I want to be putting putting those stems as we go further in when you do paint the canvas um, material if you look we come in here maybe we can see that there's little tiny gaps in where the brush hits the canvas because essentially there's a roughness to a canvas and you want that obviously because it picks up the paint but uh, if we think about it the the roughness of a canvas is like um, the resolution on, on your television uh, if a canvas has a very very tight tight weave uh, we've got a higher resolution which means um, that uh, there's less there's less interference from the canvas um, if the canvas is very very rough uh, we get uh, quite a large interference now Neither is actually better or worse. I mean, obviously, when we're talking about televisions, we want high resolution um, and monitors and so on. But um, on a canvas, um, you choose the canvas uh, for the type of painting you're doing. For an abstract work um, or a work like this, um, the resolution and the roughness of the canvas um, essentially isn't as important um, 
maybe is if you're doing fine detail. If you're doing fine detail work, or you need um, very small detail, you need to get um, a very fine grain canvas or what a lot of painters in the past used to do was they would essentially paint over the canvas or almost plaster it so that it became absolutely smooth. Um, we're not doing that here because uh, what we're working on is, is essentially quite abstract and we want we want to get this this canvas to come through we want to feel that the canvas and the, the painterliness of the whole piece so not to worry about the canvas strokes but uh, we do have to keep keep a mind of, of that they're they're going to disrupt some of the patterns and some of the shapes. So while while we want it to happen, we have to make sure that it's happening in the right places. Well, right, anyway, uh, I think we'll crack on with this a little bit further. What I might do next is put in some of the um, some of the petals, so that we get a lot, much more strong idea of what, what's going on uh, with the picture. So we can really start to feel the flowers flowers coming out. And you'll see where we're going with it, and it'll give us a more a more constructive feeling about uh, where the painting should head.
see. Um, we put in the flowers now. Uh, they're all coming across. I've sort of changed them to uh, to yellow daisies rather than uh, buttercups because uh, I don't know. They just felt they felt more they felt more uh, I don't know, vibrant, and it just the painting was asking for them rather than the, the, that kind of uh, more buttercup shape. But I just really like this one in the centre here that's sort of shining out because it's sort of like we've got the sun here. We've got the shiny one in the middle and there's dark here on the other side to sort of counterbalance it. So I just felt that that was better. So and you can change that in the middle of a painting if you if you feel it works and that's what that's what you want to do. So that's what I've gone for. Uh, as you see the light here is sort of obliterating some of these ones here which I've made much more. Uh, they merge into the background a little bit more. These ones here uh, we're getting some more detail in and once again it's sort of merging away into the darkness here so essentially this area in the middle here um, is, is, is going to be quite detailed-ish um, and then it'll blur away as it gets, gets to the edges. Um, I think that's, that sort of helps us um, almost appreciate how we see things in the real world because you often appreciate if we focus in the centre stuff and then the rest of it sort of can disappear off to the edges it feels uh, it feels more natural um, and the way to achieve that obviously is um, we break up the shapes as they come away from come away from our focal point um, I might make some of these more detailed as well actually I think I think I'll work on this as well so we've got sort of a detailed area here um, in this kind of this, this kind of half of the canvas maybe so because they're closer to the camera essentially or our eye uh, as you see um, it's really coming along quite 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 well um, and I think uh, our next step will essentially be to do some more of this some of these flowers in here and then we'll see where we go from there looks like the uh, the final stage of the painting and uh, and we're essentially we're finished um, we built up all the layers of the painting right from the darkness all the way through to these light bright areas um, we fleshed it out we've made sure that we kept uh, the whole painting fairly loose and abstract all the way through while we have a complete picture of what we're looking at we know we're seeing a um, few the daisies here light coming through here because that's what our brains are telling us. Um, when we come in close, we see that they're just blocks and shapes and lumps and colours, which, uh, which is all you need to do to make, a, to make a good abstract realist painting. Thanks for watching the video demonstration. I hope it was informative and you, you learned something from it. Uh, please do make some comments. Uh, it always helps me because then I can uh, try to tailor my, my videos in the future for you. Unfortunately, this painting has now sold. I mean, it went quite quickly. Um, after I finished that, uh, I put it up on my website, I uh, sent out some newsletters and uh, somebody bought it uh, almost immediately. Uh, if you'd like to make sure that you don't miss out uh, in the future, um, please do sign up for my newsletter as well. It's, uh, I don't send them out very often, but uh, when I do have new work up, uh, they go out and everybody uh, gets a chance to, to buy it uh, when, when they see it. Um, please, do, uh, please do like this video uh, and share it with your friends. Um, even though uh, favourite if it's, uh, it's a little too long to watch. And like I said, uh, make some comments. It's really very, very helpful to me to know what, what to produce in the future. Anyway, I uh, hope thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.